officer, I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Coroner's Amendment Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, I move that the Coroner's Amendment Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Justice and Electoral Committee to consider the bill. The Coroner's Amendment Bill makes a number of changes to the Coroner's Act 2006 to provide better services to families by improving the quality, consistency and timeliness of the coronial system. The 2006 Act instituted a major reform of the coronial system and was a significant step forward. It established the office of the Chief Coroner to provide leadership and coordination. It moved to a smaller number of mostly full-time, legally qualified coroners. It ensured family members are notified at significant steps of the coronial process. It introduced a specific regime for retention and release of body parts and body samples. And it enhanced inquiry and inquest processes. In 2012, my colleague, the Honourable Chester Burrows, the former Minister for Courts, initiated a targeted review of the Coroner's Act to look at how well the Act was working after five years. The review found that good progress had been made since the Act came into effect, but that there was room for further improvement. <coughs> Following on from that review, the main changes in this bill include better focusing coroner's recommendations, improving processes in the coronial system, including giving the chief coroner more tools to manage the overall system, better defining the cases that need to be reported to the coroner or should have evidence heard at a public inquest, and making the restrictions on publicly reporting self-inflicted deaths clearer and better targeted to matters most likely to cause harm. Many of the changes in this bill are small, but taken together they will help to speed up the coronial process to make things easier on grieving families. Mr Speaker, coroners play an important role in helping to prevent deaths by investigating the cause and circumstances of certain deaths and making recommendations to help prevent similar deaths. There is public debate from time to time about the merits of coroner's recommendations. For example, there's been debate about whether the recommendations are workable and whether they would have prevented the particular death that the coroner is investigating or about why the recommendations have not been implemented. The bill will require coroner's recommendations to be specific to the case and the evidence before the coroner and also to be clear about how the recommendations will reduce the likelihood of future deaths in similar circumstances. This will make it easier for the public to understand how the recommendations relate to that death. The bill will also strengthen the requirement for coroners to consider who should be notified of the inquiry or inquest so that they have the opportunity to contribute to the evidence before the coroner. If the coroner proposes to direct any recommendations or comments at individuals or organisations, they will be notified and given the opportunity to respond before those recommendations or comments are finalised. There's also been discussion on whether there should be a mandatory requirement for organisations to formally respond to the coroner about any recommendations directed at them. Mr Speaker, this is not proposed in the bill. Many organisations already respond voluntarily to the coroner and to compel all to do so in every case would place a considerable burden on them, particularly smaller agencies. And once the coroner has issued his or her findings, the coroner's role ends and so that they are unable to formally deal with any response. Where organisations do, however, respond to coroner's recommendations, as often happens, the responses will be made publicly available alongside the coroner's recommendations. Mr Speaker, the Chief Coroner provides important leadership in the coronial system. The Coroner's Act sets out a long list of functions of the Chief Coroner. The bill reprioritises the Chief Coroner's functions to make it clear which functions have a higher priority, gives the Chief Coroner more flexibility to manage coroner's workloads, and establishes a Deputy Chief Coroner position. The bill also encourages the use of practice notes to improve consistency between coroners and emphasises the importance of maintaining good relationships so that the coronial system works effectively. The bill will also allow the Chief Coroner to direct that no further investigation is needed if another authority has already investigated the death and has dealt with the matters a coroner is required to determine. Some aspects of the pathologist's role are clarified, such as the ability to answer questions from the family about the pathologist's report. There are also some small improvements to the processes for notifying and returning human tissue samples to families. 
Other improvements will better protect the rights of people whose conduct may be called into question in an inquiry. It requires the coroner to notify them of their right to be represented at the inquest and cross-examine witnesses. Mr Speaker, medical deaths can pose a particular difficulty in deciding whether a death should be reported, and some of the terms used in the Act, such as operation, procedure and treatment, can be broad and difficult to define. The bill will reduce uncertainty by requiring deaths to only be reported where the death would not have been expected before the operation, procedure or treatment commenced. Coroners have adopted a process requiring all overseas deaths to be reported to the coroner if the body is brought back to New Zealand for burial or cremation. However, many of these deaths are not suspicious and have been adequately investigated by an overseas authority. The bill makes it clear that such deaths may be reported if the body is in New Zealand and someone has concerns about how, about how the overseas authority responded to the death, but that there is no requirement to report the death to the coroner. If a member of the New Zealand Defence Force is killed by enemy action while on operational service overseas, a coronial investigation into the death could raise some concerns about the kind of questions the coroner can ask about military matters. The bill will give the Attorney General the role of determining whether a coronial inquiry is required and clarify that the scope of the coronial inquiry is on establishing the person's identity and the cause and circumstances of the death. Mr Speaker, the current Act restricts the information that can be made public about a self-inflicted death without the authorisation of the coroner. There has been much public discussion about the appropriateness of these reporting restrictions and what impact they have on public understanding of suicide as an issue. The Law Commission undertook a first principles review and recommended a number of changes which are reflected in the Bill. The Bill restricts making uh, public the method of the death and the place where the death occurred if the place suggests the method, unless the Chief Coroner has granted an exemption. The Chief Coroner will only be able to grant an exemption if satisfied that any risk of copycat suicidal behaviour is small and outweighed by other matters in the public interest. The Bill prevents anyone from describing a death, death as a suicide unless the Chief Coroner has granted an exemption or a coroner has made a finding that the death is suicide. However, a death can be reported as a suspected suicide if the facts support that conclusion. The reporting restrictions apply to anyone, including individuals using social media or traditional media. However, any enforcement is likely to be targeted to the more serious and persistent breaches of the Act. While many of the changes in the bill are small, as I mentioned earlier in the speech, they reinforce the public expectations of an effective coronial process which allows deaths to be investigated in a timely and efficient way so that lessons learnt from the death can be addressed quickly and bereaved families can move on with their lives. Mr Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Uh, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, um, Mr Speaker. It's uh, my